Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am your football host, Brandon. The only ring I will ever be a part of is the fifth grade ringworm club, Perna. Denver Broncos legendary head coach Mike Shanahan will finally be added to the team's ring of fame. The Patrick Mahomes contract went from $400 million to $503 million over the course of a day. I have updated info on how that will actually work. Plus, Deshaun Jackson posted some Hitler quotes to his social media account because it's 2020. And David Njoku wants to star as Kurt Warner in the new Kurt Warner movie. No, wait, that's not right. Njoku wants out of Cleveland. Kurt Warner's getting a movie. Whew. All of that on That's Good Sports. Please, for near daily football news updates, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I do have big dick Patreon shout outs for new patrons Matej Grobol Jesek, Lane Comstock, Blubba Gaming Streams Fortnite on Twitch, Mark Gillespie, Blue Ridge Mountain Plumbing, up to $109, the best plumbing in Central Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain Plumbing. And Ryan Monroe, AKA Ryan Monbro, who is wishing his girlfriend a happy birthday. Patreon.com slash that's good sports. That's how you support this channel. Uh, every month, all $5 patrons and above get an exclusive video just for their eyeballs. So if you're into it, you're. I, mm. Let us begin with Mr. Mahomes, who I now despise for multiple reasons. One, he made me do two videos in one day in mother-loving July yesterday. Two, he couldn't just give Adam Schefter or Ian the rapping reporter, there's a viral idea, the straight details of his new contract. Probably because he doesn't even know how it works. His base salary- Mil is A million and a half a year, how? I'm saying if you prorate the 10, I mean a million dollars, the 10 million, he got 10 million at the time of signing. I, I thought he got 63. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, I, I'm, look, I'm looking okay. at his, right. his signing. Let's be honest, nobody understands his contract. Which means, as soon as I uploaded my video yesterday, new numbers came out and made my numbers that I used in that video inaccurate. And based on the way that I butcher player names here, you may think that I don't care about facts. That is incorrect. I hate getting information wrong, and Mahomes' contract made me wrong, which means I am officially placing a hex on it. And we now understand the max value of his contract is $502,631,905, and not $503 million like previously reported. The $477 million number I mentioned yesterday is true because that's the total cash value of the contract, and there's another $25 million in incentives Mahomes can earn through the life of the contract. Now, one of those incentives is keeping his knee inside of the ligaments that surround it, or else he might only make 140 million in injury guarantees. This contract, in addition to keeping Mahomes in Kansas City for the next 12 years, is unique in that the entire deal has rolling guarantees. Rolling with Tommy. Oh, hi. Oh, don't cry. Which Tom Pelissero pointed out as a bit unusual for a contract this long. The rolling guarantees basically guarantee Mahomes' yearly salary a year out, so each chunk of money he gets becomes guaranteed every spring uh, for that season. Since the Chiefs aren't the Patriots, I don't see them ever using that to exploit their QB financially. What is important are the cap numbers for the Chiefs. Mahomes will only have a cap hit of like 7.3 million and 24.7 million the next two years, which give the Chiefs a big two year window to keep that roster stacked with talent. In 2022, the cap hit jumps to 31 million, peaks in 2027 at 60 million, and concludes with the $52 million cap hit in 2031, which won't matter because the NFL will be owned by Google or Facebook at that point, and all players will be paid in one of those companies' cryptos. Some people want to shit on this deal. The problem with that is it's a good deal for both the Chiefs and Mahomes. 
Uh, they will probably restructure this shit when it makes sense to do so. A restructure will allow portions of Mahomes' salary to not count against the cap. We are barely holding on to the idea that football will be played in the fall. So to know what the salary cap will be in four to five years seems impossible right now. Some will say Mahomes screwed himself by not tying his salary to a percentage of the salary cap and others will applaud him for signing a half a billion dollar contract. Critics will also say, Ryan Tannehill is going to make more money at 118 million over the next four years compared to Mahomes, who is only guaranteed to make 103. That's because the next two years are still on rookie contract years for Mahomes. Tannehill, after the year 2023, has nothing. Mahomes has 400 million still on the books after that. The only person who got screwed in the Mahomes deal is Cam Newton. The Patriots convinced Cam that letting Belichick shit in his hands was worth two in the bush. Now, I don't give a shit if Mahomes could have made more money by playing the franchise tag game like Dak Prescott. The Mahomes deal suggests he cares more about winning long-term than maxing out how much money he can make. And again, it's currently a half a billion dollars. 103 million is fully guaranteed for Mahomes by next March. That money will last him forever. If Dak and Watson make more money than Mahomes as players, but don't win shit because they handicap their shitty teams financially, does it matter? I'm all about players getting paid, but if you have made over a hundred million dollars, I don't give a shit what you make after that because at some point you're just comparing levels of greed. It's the biggest contract in sports history that Mahomes signed. But people will be like, he could have gotten more. He could have gotten more than the biggest contract ever signed by an American sports athlete. How many times do I have to tell you here? NFL contracts don't matter. They change that shit all the time to fit the team needs. Players change them, teams change them. Mahomes' contract will probably change too. But again, we all saw this coming. It's not like anybody thought the Chiefs wouldn't sign Mahomes forever. You don't let a player like that walk away. And people really want me to hate this Patrick Mahomes contract. I don't. I just hate that he plays for the Chiefs. My Broncos fandom runs deep. And when I look at the Chargers, Raiders, and Chiefs every year, I wish that they all go 0-12-4, mathematically the worst record they could all have at the same time, while the Broncos go 16-0. That is what is in my football heart. But right now, I can't hate Mahomes the way I hated Tom Brady on the Patriots because when I watch Mahomes play football, I am both impressed and entertained. My hate for Tom Brady stems from the fact that every time I watched him play football, I was like, there are 20 other quarterbacks in the league who can do what he is doing every Sunday. They just don't have the team and coaches around them. When I watch Mahomes play, I'm like, fuck. And I say that about other quarterbacks like Deshaun Watson. I'm like, fuck. Russell Wilson, fuck, most of the time. Aaron Rodgers, fucking, slowing down a little bit, still fuck. Lamar Jackson, I'm like, fuck. And Jimmy Garoppolo in the shower, yeah, impressed there too. Denying that Mahomes is a special quarterback is like denying that Drew Locke has a horse cock. Some things are facts. We know it, we accept it. And I will never root for Mahomes to win another Super Bowl but I won't send him the hate mail via the US Postal Service from an untraceable, net. No, never mind. I don't believe in cancel culture. We're moving on now. But I am canceling the Denver Post after it committed treason yesterday when they erroneously tweeted that Thomas Edward Patrick Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. Are they aware that they are the Denver Post and not the city of Boston's official cum rag? This is a cancel as far as I am concerned. I'd be less offended if the Denver Post had a headline every Sunday on the front page of the sports section that read, Brandon Perna has a micro penis. In the city that John Elway built, in the city that Peyton Manning remodeled like Joanna Gaines, I hope whoever wrote that article is not only fired but sentenced to blogging about beauty YouTubers for the duration of Patrick Mahomes' contract. If you read the Denver Post sports section right now, you're a traitor. Not a traitor, Mike Shanahan, who will finally be inducted into the Broncos' ring of fame. The highest honor you can receive as a member of the Broncos' organization, 
next to just being John Elway. He joins Red Miller and Dan Reeves as the only other coaches in the ring. We'd be talking about Kyle Shanahan's future spot there if John Elway hadn't been blinded by Vance Joseph's charm, I guess. Someone who will never be in any ring of fame is Deshaun Jackson, who posted a quote falsely attributed to Hitler on his Instagram page last night. The stupidity it takes to see the word Hitler followed by quotations and then think you should post it to your social media account is beyond me. Like how do you not even check with a friend to make sure they're real Hitler quotes? Hey, hey Carson? Uh, I want to post this thing that Hitler said. Can can you confirm that these were actually the words he said and that I am conveying the message I want to convey through Hitler's words? Can you check that for me, Carson? I'm not going to read the quote because it's not worth repeating, but you know you fucked up when ESPN has a headline the next day that reads, Eagles' Deshaun Jackson says he doesn't hate Jewish community after posting anti-Semitic messages. Now Jackson apologized today, and the Eagles released this statement. We have spoken with Deshaun Jackson about his social media posts. Regardless of his intentions, the messages he shared were offensive, harmful, and absolutely appalling. They have no place in our society and are not condoned or supported in any way by the organization. We are disappointed and we reiterated to Deshaun the importance of not only apologizing, but also using his platform to take action to promote unity, equality, and respect. We are continuing to evaluate the circumstances and will take appropriate action. We take these matters very seriously and are committed to continuing to have a productive and meaningful conversations with Deshaun as well as as all of our players and staff in order to educate, learn, and grow. Jesus, when you have to use that many words in a press release, you might, you might as well just release the guy. The Eagles kept Riley Cooper around after he was caught on video using the N-word. That doesn't mean they should keep Deshaun Jackson as well. That's such a weird argument to make. They did the wrong thing in the past, so they get to do the wrong thing again because Deshaun Jackson is like way better than Riley Cooper. I don't know, posting anti-Semitic quotes to your social media account is a fireable offense in my eyes, even if you're too stupid to actually understand what you're posting. But like all NFL teams, the Eagles will consider the money before they do what is morally right here. Browns tight end David Njoku is requesting a trade out of Cleveland per his agent Drew Rosenhaus. Rosenhaus. The Browns exercised uh, Njoku's fifth year contract, but they also sent mixed signals by signing Austin Hooper and then drafting tight end Harrison Bryant in the fourth round, essentially saying they're upgrading the position. Njoku was a first round pick in 2017, a solid option in the passing game until last season when he got hurt and played only four games, which likely prompted the Browns to sign Hooper and draft a reinforcement. Naturally, the Patriots have been mentioned as a landing spot for David Njoku, which makes sense because Cam excels with a good tight end, like when Greg Olson was healthy. All I know is that it is always better to request a trade out of Cleveland and not to Cleveland, like Odell Beckham Jr. did. The Packers, Cardinals, Dolphins, Panthers, and Cowboys were all mentioned by Bleacher Report as landing spots for the tight end, based solely on the idea that those teams could all use more tight end production. For my personal rooting interest, I would like to see him go to the Packers and play with Aaron Rodgers. And finally, the Kurt Warner biopic that nobody asked for is on its way. And the actor playing Kurt Warner is Zachary Levi of Chuck and Shazam fame. Now I have nothing against Levi, but it's hard to play a guy who we can all see on the NFL network anytime we turn on our TV. This isn't like playing Abraham Lincoln because we have hundreds of hours of footage that show Kurt Warner playing football, being interviewed, and repeatedly telling the story of his career. We all remember Kurt Warner won a Super Bowl while also working the produce section at a grocery store after he married the bad guy from Blade Runner. We know his story. I just said I don't have anything against Levi, but I would like to contradict myself and ask why they couldn't get a better actor instead of sacrificing talent for someone who looks exactly like Kurt Warner. Why not de-age Mark Ruffalo, who kind of looks like Kurt Warner, or age Finn Wolford, who may eventually look like Kurt Warner? 
Fuck it. Just have Kurt Warner play Kurt Warner. And that's it. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Subscribe on the YouTubes. Do you know how to do that? Just click that button. Mm -hmm. You can click it.